Hey guys. Hey, uh, so this video here is going to be for all of you beginners, whether you've got an E-Pro or a Geo Pro. Uh, we have here behind us is a 2021 uh, Geo Pro 19 FBS. So in this video here, it's going to be short and sweet and to the point because uh, you're probably setting up at a campground right now. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you the things you need. You're going to need to buy for these um, if you haven't already bought them and uh, then show you real quickly how to uh, get this thing connected, get it set up. First off, get you a hitch block, just something to um, not have to run this all the way out. So uh, the closer in this is, the sturdier it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, so get you a block of some sort, just like that one. So next we're going to talk water. Uh, I actually have my filter hooked up a little differently than what's probably recommended. Typically you would put this filter down over there near the spigot uh, along with your pressure regulator. But anyway, water filter, 90 degree here. It'll take some of the tension off of this, which I've put it right back on by <laughs> putting the filter there. Uh, but nonetheless, um, yeah, so water filter, 90 hose started off with one of the white hoses what a pain these blue flexible hoses here are so much better so much so much less frustrating so i recommend these i can't remember what brand it is but look it up uh, it actually it says evo flex on it so an evo flex hose way easier to deal with than those white hoses here's your pressure regulator right here you basically just want a pressure regulator so you don't blow up all your pipes uh, i think they're saying like 40 psi is about the highest you want to run on those uh, and you can dial that back so if your campground water pressure is at 100 and some odd psi you can dial it back using that pressure regulator there to an acceptable pressure a couple of different connections you're going to have over here for water city water connection here your antifreeze inlet, inlet was for when you're uh, starting to winterize that'll be in a different video there's plenty of videos already out there for winterization Here's your other connection for a hose. This is to actually flush out your black tank uh, when you're getting ready to leave. Last thing water related we're gonna cover is uh, your water heater. Uh, here's your actual uh, resets here for your water heater. So basically if you leave it on without any, um, any water in it, it will trip those fuses there. Uh, understandably, so you don't ruin your, your hot water heater. Uh, and then here's your anode rod here. Uh, I'm a little picky, so I've just put a new anode rod in. They're, they're cheap. This one was starting to, you know, to look, I mean, look at it. You can see there. What the anode rod does is it stops um, your water from attacking the actual inside of your tank. It attacks this rod as opposed to your tank. So they are very useful. They are necessary. Um, I didn't have to replace this one. They can look way far worse than this before you actually have to replace. Uh, but you will need... You're going to need this guy, which is a 1 and 1 16th socket to get that in and out. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and have you a 1 and 1 16th socket on hand. Makes your life a heck of a lot easier. And again, we'll show how to drain these down in another video. Uh, there may already be videos out there. Actually, I lied. So one last thing uh, to do with fresh water. So here's your fresh water fill. So if you wanted to fill your tank and not actually hook up to city water, this is where you're going to do that at. So now we're going to talk power really quick. There's your 30 amp plug right there. So this is what's going to plug in uh, to your campground power. But actually what you want to do is probably have a power uh, surge protector. So if any kind of surges happen on the campground, they don't run through your camper and potentially blow fuses or breakers uh, or potentially burn up uh, power. These are about 50 bucks. You can find them all over Amazon. This one works well. This is on the cheaper side. I think this one was around 40. But yeah, so you're going to have to have uh, a power cord. This side here is what's going to plug directly into your camper. And it actually plugs right here. And there's our completed power hooked up. So we're ready to go as far as power. We're ready to go as far as water. Now we're gonna get ready to go for sewer. All right, so here's your sewer connection. Typically what you would wanna do, you one, you wanna have gloves. I mean, you don't wanna cross contaminate everything else that you're 
you're working on but uh, you probably want to have a larger wrench on hand some of these are end up being snug uh, sometimes so you do need a, a larger wrench on board uh, they do make actual wrenches for these PVC caps as well so make sure you get one of those what you're also going to want to have on board is one of these adapters here you can see it has different sizes so it can fit into different uh, sewer um, uh, connectors uh, it doesn't cover all of them so there's some weird sizes that I've seen out there but they do make a rubber adapter that you can wrap around this it'll help help make it fit into just about any sewer connection so you're going to put that in there spin it around tighten it up and then point it in the general direction of your sewer connection which is back over here under your camper you're going to see this little guy right here this is where your sewer hose is stored so you can see here that's where it's stored pull that out connect this in here to your other connection here pull your hose over and lock it in and voila so there you've got that show you one other little thing that I do have on board to be honest with you I don't like it I don't like it at all uh, but in this case I am gonna have to use it because it droops my hose droops down and so all that water is going to collect right there and it's just a little hose ramp that makes the water make sure the water flows all the way down to your clean out so here it is the thing I don't like using but it's necessary sometimes and there's our completed water setup power setup and sewer setup so now we're gonna have to uh, get it get this thing leveled out I'll take you through that one thing you're gonna wanna have are some leveling ramps on hand. They make different types and different kinds, but you are, first when you pull up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're leveled uh, side to side. And how you do that, obviously, you take a level, you can put it on the floor, they make fancy gadgets. that will also help you uh, get it leveled out. I do it the old fashioned way. Level on the floor, some people say level on the tongue. I do it on the floor, so. And so if one side is higher than the other, then you need to bring the low side up. And what you're gonna do is tuck that ramp behind your tire. Uh, and then you're gonna actually pull the trailer up on that until you actually have it level on the inside. And then of course, you know, first things first, chalk all your wheels. Once you get that done, all your wheels need to be chalked before you ever even think about disconnecting. So to get this thing leveled out, there's a few tools that you're gonna need. And here they all three are. So you've got your leveling blocks here. And what you're gonna do is stick this over the top of that. And you're gonna, whichever end is higher or lower, whichever end is higher, uh, if there is one, you're gonna wanna use more of these blocks on that end. Uh, so the less that you extend these, the more stable you're gonna be once you get fully set up. Um, also keep in mind, these jacks are not to level your camper out. You need to have your camper leveled uh, again by your leveling ramps and then level uh, front to back with your, um, with your jack. Uh, these are just stability jacks. They're not meant to uh, raise up the camper to get it leveled out. They're, they're not heavy enough to do that. So these are just stability jacks, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set one of these up. Um, first, real quick, this adapter here for a drill makes my life so much easier. You can use that the old fashioned way. It works, it works when the batteries are dead. <laughs> but uh, you can get these adapters just about anywhere. I think you can get them off Amazon, they're at Walmart, uh, and um, a lot of other places, but it does make your life a lot easier. And you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and Lower this down. I'm gonna get it in place. Just getting it snug. And usually, what I'll do once I do this on each corner, I'll walk right back around one more time just to make sure that everything's snug. And then what that'll do is gonna stop the the camper from kind of rocking back and forth. It'll feel a lot more sturdy uh, on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these set up. I'm not gonna take you through that, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, I'm going to show you how to set these up. Believe me, I hate these stairs. They aggravate me. If you don't get them just right, that door 
will drag across the top of these stairs. As you can see, I've done that a few times and it will not close. So you're gonna adjust it with these little pins here. You just gotta pull them out like that and then start working this thing in. So I'm not gonna do this on camera because I think I have to keep it uh, clean for YouTube and there'll probably be a little bit of cussing involved. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna set this up and I'll show you how it's properly uh, set up when I'm done. All right, there it is, perfect. That took like two seconds. I'm just kidding, it was more like 30 minutes. But no, no it was like two, two minutes. This one was an easy one, didn't frustrate me at all. Uh, but again, yeah, this is one of the annoyances I've run into with uh, with this camper here. But you know, hey, take. There's bigger and better things to be annoyed over, I guess, but this one gets me every time. All right, so now we're gonna move over to the gas. Gas is pretty easy. You can see this valve here. You're just gonna point that arrow towards which tank you wanna use. Just gonna turn your gas on. And then what I do uh, typically well is I'll go inside and I'll run the igniter on the stove. Uh, until it actually fires up that basically primes it for your grill outside And it also primes it for your heater if you're going to use your heater uh, So so yeah, so prime it with the stove on the inside um, Otherwise, you're going to be wondering why things are not lighting because there's like going to be a lot of air in the lines All right, one thing on the geo pro one of the faults uh, that I've seen happen a couple of times not with me personally, but, but with others is this slide out here when you make sure you're clear before you do it, when you start to run the slide out, out, do not stop. Keep it going all the way out. Don't stop. What that's doing is it's causing, there's some sort of um, synchronization that goes on with these little motors here and they get out of sync for some reason when you start, when you start stopping and starting halfway through. Run it all the way out and then when you run it back in, run it all the way in. Uh, we have not had a problem with this one yet. I've seen multiple people have issues with it and uh, I've seen uh, several comments to say that that's because people are stopping and starting midway through uh, this process. So I'm going to go run it out and you'll see that. All right, here's your slide out. You're just going to push it, hold it all the way out. Now I've made some modifications there. Yours doesn't look like this. This actually goes with the couch typically, but I've modified this for a little extra under storage there. But, uh, but that's it. I mean, that's super simple. Uh, so now I'll show you the awning operation. The awning operation is pretty easy. I mean, you just extend it. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind as it pertains to awnings, these things are not made for high wind. If you've got wind, I just pull it back in. Uh, you see it all the time. People leave these things out when they go somewhere and they come back and these things are wrecked. So uh, just again, make sure, make sure that you don't have high winds. You're gonna see about where I stop mine. When that little flap comes out right there, boom, I stop. Then I tighten these guys. Just one over here and then one on the other side. And you can cut pipe, which we actually have some in there, but you can cut pipe insulation and put it over this because, uh, you know, I've about knocked myself out about 14 times. So thank goodness we've had those. It certainly does uh, not hurt the head as much. All right, last thing we're gonna touch on here, uh, we'll get in some other videos and, and some other tips and tricks, but um, is the operation of this. So in on that button is on and then out is if you're using gas, in is if you're using electric. Um, I know that there are different models uh, of this fridge on newer uh, Geo Pros. Some are 115 volts, some are 12 volts, uh, but this one is gas and 12 volt uh, and 115. So it's, uh, I guess, call it a three way uh, fridge. But if these things aren't level, you will destroy them. So don't run these when you're going down the road. Don't run it if your camper's not level. I almost learned that one the hard way. Uh, freaked me out a little bit. 
I thought I'd, I'd ran it uh, while it was on level. Uh, those things are like 1200 bucks. So make sure your camper's level before you turn it on. So I'm gonna end off there uh, with the simple setup things. And, and again, nobody, you may not agree with some of the things I've done, and that's fine. Nobody taught me how to do this. I did it myself, watched some videos, and I figured out what works for me. There may be some things that you find that work better for you. You don't have to do it my way. Uh, and that's, you know, that's okay. We can, we can agree to disagree on some things, right? Uh, but anyway, um, I hope this helps. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, these are great trailers. Uh, the Geo Pros are awesome. Uh, we've uh, been pretty much all over the country uh, with ours. So uh, enjoy. Um, and then we'll start putting some modifications and some tips and tricks in some future videos for you guys as well uh, pertaining to the Geo Pro. So uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, like and subscribe. Help us out here. Um, yeah, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.